Hello everyone, Slayer-kun here. This is a review on Grand Theft Auto 2 that I originally made back in January. I originally decided to cancel this review since I found it to be my weakest review, but I thought I'd show it anyways just for fun. I had two versions of this review, one of which only made it halfway through production before I scrapped it. What you are watching is the first version, of which I actually completed. The audio in this is a little bit crappy since I recorded it on my phone's microphone, so I guess I'll just have to deal with that. But without any further ado, let's take a look at the well-known and totally not obscure in the slightest GTA 2. Hello everyone, Slayer Coon here. The Grand Theft Auto series transcends the world of video games. Not only is it one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time, but it remains an important part of pop culture as we speak. However, the Grand Theft Auto fanbase has a very big tendency to forget about the existence of the first couple of games in their favorite series. The first couple of entries in the GTA franchise are pretty much non-existent to 80% of the gaming community. In fact, GTA V is most people's first GTA game at this point, which is a shame because that game is a fucking bore. I've already discussed GTA 1 in my first ever edition of Slayer Coon Reviews, but I thought I'd take it one step further and review its successor, GTA 2. Released in 1999, GTA 2 is the black sheep of the number GTA games. It's sort of this weak link between the humble beginnings of 1 and the genre-defying greatness of 3, and thus it often gets ignored. Upon booting up the game, we are greeted to this short film to get us all hyped up. It's nothing special, so I usually end up skipping it, but it really shows off how ambitious this series was at the time. Then we are greeted to the title screen, and that glorious theme song. Dare I say, this is actually one of the best GTA theme songs in my opinion. We are then thrown into the game with the missions yet again being activated through payphones. The graphics have been improved to actually looking somewhat decent. They are far from being technically impressive, but they actually look presentable this time. GTA 1 looks like it was made in MS Paint. Thankfully, burping and farting has made a return. There are a couple new weapons added to the game, including dual pistols, a shotgun, grenades and Molotov cocktails, and an electro gun that turns your enemies into spooky scary skeletons. The gunplay has also been improved from the last game, although it sucks there isn't a lock on button. Kill Frenzies are back too, this time with more difficult objectives. There has been a change in controls with this game. The game now uses the right shoulder button to shoot, with the circle button being used for passing gas. The next couple of games up until GTA 4 reverted back to using the circle button to shoot, however. The game takes place in Anywhere City. No, really, that's what it's actually called. It doesn't seem to be based off of any actual American cities, and is very forgettable and bland. And it's easier to get lost in the city than the first game because of this. The gameplay takes on a retro-futuristic aesthetic that would never be seen in any future GTA title. The cars and weapons almost look like something out of the Fallout games. While I don't think these design choices are bad, they definitely feel very out of place in a Grand Theft Auto game. There's now a respect system. You'll earn or lose respect with the three gangs depending on which one you work with. The game's soundtrack is... okay. It's not as good or as memorable as the first game, but I'd say it's better than the soundtrack we got in 3. The radio stations now include banter and commercials, something that would later become a staple in the GTA franchise just not nearly as refined or funny. When I said that this game is the black sheep of the franchise, I really mean it. It barely feels like a GTA game, to be honest. Sure, you have a massive city and the ability to kill as you please, but something about this game just doesn't seem right. I totally understand why there hasn't been a retro-futuristic GTA game ever since this. This series has been in the 80s and the 90s, but would never step foot in this setting ever again. And until we have flying cars, I doubt it ever will. That's not to mention that for all the improvements made from the previous game, there are plenty of problems too. The police, for instance, are the most relentless I've ever seen in a GTA game. It's like their cars are equipped with jet engines. I had a really hard time trying to escape them, more so than any other game in the series. 
Not to mention, the story is even more non-existent than the previous game. In GTA 1, after completing a chapter, you were greeted with a cutscene. Sure, they were pretty poorly animated and had incredibly forced swearing for the sake of edginess. You listen to me, you two-bit mother sucker! I hear you're working behind my back! If that's true, I'm gonna fuck you like a crazy bitch! Get the f*** out of my sight! But it felt like a reward for making progress. In this game, you get none of that. And once you beat the game, all you get is a screen saying game complete. Even the Zelda CDI games had better endings than this. I won! And then we come to the biggest problem with GTA 2. On the PS1 version, which I've been reviewing this whole time, it has a T rating. There's barely any blood when you kill someone, and the swearing in the game's soundtrack is censored with obnoxious car horns. The sole reason many people play GTA to begin with is stripped away in this version. A GTA game without the violence is like a Gran Turismo game, but the only cars you can drive are rusty pickup trucks, or a Call of Duty game where all the weapons were replaced with Nerf guns. If they released a GTA game with a T rating today, there would be riots in the streets of every major city on Earth. I'd be surprised if a T-rated GTA game could sell even half a million copies. The other versions of this game are rated M as usual and far superior. And because of this, GTA 2 on the PS1 gets a 5 out of 10. It may not be a bad game exactly, but it has a buttload of problems that prevent me from giving it a 6. And I would rather play GTA 1 than this watered-down joke of a port. Thankfully, after this disaster, Rockstar Games learned their lesson and would go on to make GTA 3 one of the most influential and highest rated games ever, and the games would continue to get better and better, at least until GTA 5 came out. But that's a story for another day.